All right, welcome everybody. It's about time I circle back around to OpenSUSE's micro OS. Actually, owe oh, you all an apology. I did an interview with Richard Brown from OpenSUSE this morning, uh, and it was an hour long, and we had a ton of great content. We went through everything, showed off the entire desktop, asked him a bunch of questions, and the audio didn't come out right. Uh, so I'm gonna have to loop back with him and uh, sort out how we're going to uh, redo that. But in the meantime, um, I, I spent some time, dusted off the OpenSUSE laptop and looked at some of the things that they've been working on. And I decided I'll give you a little tour anyway for the weekend. So I've installed it and um, installing it. Uh, there's plenty of videos there on the internet on, on uh, how to install uh, Linux and things like that. I kind of want to go over more of the um, uh, differences and uh, between this and like something like Fedora Silverblue and what... I'm looking for when I'm looking for like what I've been calling a cloud native uh, Linux desktop, right? Which is that image based uh, immutable business that uh, we are all talking about on this channel. So this is the usual um, GNOME first user uh, wizard thing that when you log in, I, I wanted to um, specifically do a clean install on the VM to show you how it's set up and to show you what the new user experience is like. So, but, um, OpenSUSE has been using a uh, ButterFS for a long time as its default file system. So for, for them being able to add that kind of read only aspect to it is not that much further than what they're already doing. So, um, they're using ButterFS snapshots to kind of give us that, um, thing to roll back to, right. Uh, versus Fedora silver blue, which is using RPO OS tree and both give us methods of installing things. Um, on the images themselves, and we'll get into that. But one of the very first things that I really liked is after you finish, um, OpenSUSE does not come with a browser on the system image. It actually, as part of your new user login, snags Mozilla's official Firefox flat pack and installs it um, as your user, actually, inside your user. That's the equivalent of adding a dash dash user when you're doing a flat pack install, those of you that are using the so I think that is very interesting and they are making an effort to install as many things uh, graphically as your user and not system wide to kind of give you that flexibility. I think that's really cool. They are doing full flat pack. So out of the box, you don't have to change anything. Everything in flat hat, flat hub is available to you unfiltered. And I really like that. I know there's reasons Fedora does that. Um, but as a end user, this is just really nice because I know when someone installs it, they will get their browser and they'll be able to get all of the web stuff that they need to get, um, you know, videos working and all that stuff. And everything in FlatHub is immediately available to them. And it's more of an out of the box experience. And that's just what users are expecting in 2022. So major props for them for going kind of all in on this model. It lets uh, the micro OS team kind of focus on the system itself. Uh, one of the, the bummers you don't get to hear about the interview is the process in which they build uh, OpenSUSE. So I'll make sure we concentrate that more on that next time because it's very important how things get from an upstream project into your distribution. And OpenSUSE's answer to, get, to explain it simply is just automate the hell out of everything. So they've got everything um, automated to enable to publish uh, updates um, very, very quickly. So the first thing you'll notice when you download it is the ISO is refreshed on the regular. So, you know, the, the ISO that you download and you install, that you're getting the freshest one there. And there's no separate step to install it after you've done an initial installation as opposed to getting like a point release roll up that Ubuntu does, right? They do that quarterly or, um, you know, some distros, they might refresh an ISO. Uh, Open switches, they just automatically do it. It's just part of their process. That's how they So If you see here, uh, it's installed Firefox, and this is the um, the actual real Firefox from Mozilla, not not a distro um, repackage, which is an important part uh, of this model that they're going all in on. So, um, and as you see, when you go into GNOME software, uh, there's the full the, the full flat pack or flat hub. Sorry, I want to make sure I'm not. Uh, all of the great stuff that I'm enjoying in silver blue, I get the exact same stack, right? So my OBS will have all of the goodies uh, that are included in flat hub. And of course my gaming stack with steam mango HUD, all of the things that I'm running in the channel on Fedora silver blue, I, I can do on this as well uh, because I'm just utilizing the flat hub for that. So 
that is uh, non diff not any different from um, any other distro, which is kind of the point uh, of what we're trying to build here. So let's go into the terminal and dig in a little bit. I don't want the video to be. Digging. Now they are not using ButterFS compression by default. So that's something that you'd have to enable. Um, uh, I just thought I'd point that out. Uh, I've really been enjoying the transparent Z standard compressed uh, ButterFS in, in Fedora. And that's something that I hope OpenSUSE considers at some. Uh, let's talk about system updates. So the CLI is actually called, uh, actually, do I need to sudo or not? Let's find out. Just a sudo. Um, it's called transactional update. This is a long command. Um, and it will do a system update uh, every 24 hours. In addition, they've recently enabled automatic flat pack updates as well. So I really like this because they're actually really going for the, everything is automated for you in the background. If an update is up all up in your face, like that's, that's not what they want, right? They, they, they want the automated processes and the computers to do all the work so that by the time it gets to you is, um, is less hands-on for me. And, uh, on my laptop, actually, I've never actually done maintenance on it. I just kind of use it naturally. Uh, it, when people ask me, you know, hey, how do I manage my reboots and stuff in a model like this? I just use my computer normally. You know, if I'm not using it, I turn it off um, and then I turn it on. So uh, on my laptop, I have kernel, the latest kernel, which is uh, as of today is uh, 6.0.7. Um, the current upstream is 6.0.8, I believe. So you're getting pretty aggressive kernel upgrades uh, here. And I really enjoy that. So now the question becomes, well, what happens if I need to do something in this on the system? Um, and that is transactional update package installed. And we're going to add something that is not on the uh, core image, which is nano. It uh, comes with Vim, I believe, by default. But let's say I want nano on my image. Um, and there it is. I've installed it. Of course not. It's not actually there until I reboot into it. So part of this is being able to stage those updates into a non-running system, which is really important. So um, if I do reboot the system, then I will get nano. So here usually is when people ask, well, how, how do I get all my goodies and all the things that I want? So I'm actually was very happy to learn um, that they're just including DistroBox by default. And they've been working with the DistroBox team to get the bugs that they need fixed in order to ship it by default. And that has made me very happy to see these two groups connect because just typing DistroBox enter will get you a, will grab a tumbleweed container and that will be our user space. And this is where we're going to do our play and install all the things that we want. So I am very excited that they've gone this direction and uh, they're even considering having a custom image made that's more conducive to uh, being used by DistroBox, right? So maybe not having to do install these basic packages and just have it instantly out of the box, which is a great goal to go um, uh, to shoot for, I think. Uh, however, right now it's just grabbing the normal uh, OpenSUSE tumbleweed image. It will go ahead and do the things that it needs to do. You only need to do this once uh, when you're creating the container, kind of consider it as part of your installation process. And then after that, you will just uh, have your DistroBox terminals which kind of waiting for that to happen uh while we're waiting that um it is a rolling release i think a lot of people know that already so in contrast to fedora where you have to rebase from 36 to 37 obviously that's one command um you just never upgrade explicitly in micro os at all you kind of just leave. and so as i've been talking about that's kind of their their goal is to just kind of be there and invisible in the background. So uh, let's, on my notes. Boxed. There we go. And from then on, when you open a terminal, I'm going to pin this terminal. Uh, if you do distro box enter, 
basically instant. Um, those of you that are following my channel know that I like to just make that the default command when I open a terminal to go in there, uh, but I haven't set that up here. That would be something interesting, maybe maybe an option or something like that that uh, can be toggled. But there's lots of research to do in this area. So while we're in here, we're gonna do the normal um, normal SUSE business, which you're using Zipper. Now we're installing Nano, and here we have our whole different um, user space. Uh, that is also open Sousa on top of our nice, stable, clean image that we're not really messing with. And we're keeping all our entropy inside these containers. So I wanted to install that right away. And remember, we're also doing open Sousa as a host, but there's nothing stopping us from using Fedora here as these terminals or Ubuntu or literally any cloud image uh, that is published out there. So no need to wait for a reboot on here because we put this inside the container. So here's where I'm, you know, installing the cool tools and things that I'm going to be using day to day. If you are getting started in these systems, this is the place to start. I believe, you know, with the, um, the nice integration of installing the Firefox flat pack, unfiltered flat hub, just available out of the box. You can give that to anybody. They will just click on GNOME software and they're set, you know? Um, and, uh, so I think it's a really nice way to start. And if you're using OpenSUSE already, you're already probably in, uh, familiar with ButterFS snapshots and maintaining the image and rolling forward and back. So you don't have a lot to lose. If you're already a Tumbleweed user, this is a pretty nice setup and I'm strongly considering um, uh, move, moving one of my more important machines to uh, to the system here. I'm, I'm experimenting with a lot of these, hopefully trying to get some information out there so people can go around and play. But wow, they have really made a lot of progress in the past year. And I'm looking forward to meeting with Richard again, getting the audio fixed. And we'll talk a little bit more on how they're building this because how they put this together is just as important, right? If they're going to give you automatic updates, then you, know, you wanna know that the infrastructure that they're building and the automation is taking care of the problems long before they hit your disk. So that is what we'll talk about next time. Thanks very much for uh, uh, listening in. And as always, feel free to ask questions uh, below. And I'm looking forward to listening to your feedback. And then uh, I will try to get with Richard as fast as I can. Thanks, everyone, and have a great weekend.